Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, this is where we explore how technology, politics, and finance interact, because these days, you can't talk about one without talking about the others. And today, I've got a story for you that hits all three. It's about Huawei, China's chip ambitions, U.S. export controls, and what it really means when we talk about technological independence in 2025. Over the weekend, a quiet but massive piece of news came out via CCTV, the Chinese state media outlet. It confirmed something that many had speculated about, but now we know for sure. Huawei's latest chip, the Kirin X90, is a 5 nanometer processor, and it's being rolled out right now. At first glance, that's impressive. 5 nm chips are not trivial to make, but the real shock here is how this chip was made. It is not based on ARM architecture. It doesn't rely on Intel's x86 design. It doesn't use American IP. It isn't manufactured at TSMC. But let that sink in. This is a fully domestic chip, designed by Huawei, built using Chinese intellectual property, and produced within China using local manufacturing processes. It represents one of the most dramatic assertions of technological sovereignty we've seen in years. Now, this chip is going to be central to Huawei's strategy. It's not just for flagship smartphones, although it will definitely show up in those. It's being integrated into laptops, wearables, tablets, even Huawei's AI infrastructure. This is going to be the core of Huawei's entire device ecosystem. For example, we now know that the MateBook Pro and the MateBook Fold, two of their newest PC lines, will use the Kirin X90. The MateBook Fold in particular has turned heads. It's one of the first truly foldable screen PCs, not a dual screen with a hinge in the middle, a single seamless foldable OLED display in a full factional PC form factor, that's something even Apple hasn't done, yet. The response has been immediate. 180,000 pre-orders from a production run that's capped at 200,000 units for the first three months. That kind of demand for a PC in today's market? Very rare. This shows that consumers are not only accepting this Chinese tech, they're eager for it. And let's put this in context. What Huawei is doing is beyond impressive. They're attempting something even Apple hasn't pulled off. Apple designs its own chips, yes, but they still license ARM's instruction set, and they rely entirely on TSMC in Taiwan to manufacture. That's two critical points of dependency. Huawei is working toward owning every part of the stack. And it's not just talk. They're already executing on it. Let's talk manufacturing for a moment, because that's one of the most technically challenging parts. When the news first dropped, people assumed the chips were manufactured by SMIC, China's largest foundry but more recent reporting points instead to Psi Carrier, using a technique called Multi-Mentor Deep Ultraviolet DUV Lithography. Now, Dove isn't new. Western companies were using Dove for 28M, 14M, and 7M nodes. But for anything below 7M modes of the world shifted to EUV lithography, which uses extreme ultraviolet light to etch smaller patterns on silicon wafers. China doesn't have access to EUV equipment due to export restrictions, especially the ones involving ASML, the Dutch company that makes the only EUV machines in the world. So Huawei and SI Carrier have done something remarkable. They've taken DUV and they've pushed it to the edge of what's physically possible. Using multi-patterning, basically running the chip through the DUV process multiple times to imprint more detail, they're simulating 5 NM level performance. Yes, it's more expensive. Yes, it's less efficient than EUV. But the fact that they can do it at all, and at scale, is a huge win for China's semiconductor ambitions. So let's step back again and look at the broader picture. We're not just talking about one chip. We're talking about a blueprint for a self-sufficient Chinese semiconductor industry. Huawei is building the infrastructure to support a vertically integrated ecosystem. Smartphones, PCs, wearables, tablets cloud AI chips, even modems, all powered by their own silicon. And that's the part where geopolitics enters the chat. Because this didn't happen in a vacuum. Huawei has been under pressure for years. The U.S. government, starting under President Trump and continuing under President Biden, has made it clear. Huawei is a national security concern. Sanctions were put in place. Export controls were tightened. Huawei was cut off from buying chips, from licensing IP, even from accessing Google's Android O. What did Huawei do? They responded with incredible resilience. They developed Harmony OS as a replacement for Android. They rebuilt their app ecosystem. 
they created their own mobile services platform. They started designing their own cloud and AI chips, including the Ascend and now the Cloud Matrix series, which are competitive alternatives to NVIDIA's data center chips. And now they've created a 5NM smartphone and PC chip without using ARM, without using Intel, and without using TSMC. So let me say this clearly. The strategy of using export controls to kneecap China's tech sector, if anything, it's accelerated China's drive for self-reliance, and Huawei is now the poster child for that movement. Even Jensen Huang, CEO of, of NVIDIA, has hinted at this. He said the export restrictions are not effective. He said he wants to compete in China, not avoid it. That should tell you something. When one of the most powerful people in the semiconductor industry wants a fair fight, you know things are shifting. And here's where things get serious. The U.S. government has issued guidance, warning of substantial civil and criminal penalties for people or organizations using Huawei's AI chips. But at the same time, Huawei is producing chips at scale, and they've said they now have enough to meet all internal and developer demand in China. Let's be realistic, they're not all stolen NVIDIA chips. That theory doesn't hold up anymore. So if the U.S. wants to maintain its leadership in this space, it has to do better than threats. It needs to offer competition, not just restriction. And here's the human cost that people don't talk about. Imagine you're a tech entrepreneur, somewhere in Europe or Southeast Asia. You're trying to launch a startup. You need AI chips. You can't get NVIDIA because of export restrictions or pricing. But Huawei has chips available. Do you take the risk? Will the U.S. government fine you? Arrest you? This legal uncertainty is crippling innovation around the world. It puts developers and companies in limbo. And it gives Huawei one more reason to go all in on building an ecosystem that doesn't depend on the West, because neither do their customers want to. So what do we do now? Well, we acknowledge the reality. Huawei has pulled off something big. The Kirin X90 isn't just a chip, it's a flag planted in the ground. It says, we can do this ourselves, and we will. And if current trends continue, Huawei may soon be producing 3N-class chips on their own EUV equipment, all developed and manufactured in China. It's not guaranteed it's not going to be easy, but they've already proven the doubters wrong again and again. So the question isn't, can they do it? It's, what will the West do in response? Or are we going to cling to outdated policies that clearly aren't working? Or are we going to adapt, compete, and innovate? That's what I've got for you today. The Kirin X90 is here. It's 5M. It's homegrown. It's powering an ecosystem. And it's a wake-up call. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think the export controls have failed? Should the U.S. change its approach? Can Huawei become a global chip powerhouse? If you found this useful, hit the like button, subscribe for more updates like this, and consider supporting the channel. Every little bit helps me keep bringing you honest, in-depth analysis of stories that really matter.